Hi guys. Another great day outdoors. I have no clue what the temp is. I just know it's gorgeous. Doesn't feel bad at all. I'm going to guess it's in the 20s. Breezy, but not real windy. So, I've already been out here for a little while. I tried to make some bacon wrapped hot dogs. And, um, that was a disaster. My, um, skillet wouldn't get hot enough. So, because I was going to cook them on the flat skillet. But, um, couldn't get it hot enough to start them, so I started them on here. And, wow, the toothpicks caught on fire, and I took them out, and then the bacon fell off, and it was a mess. So, I went and gave them to JT, <laughs> and came back with some steaks. It's been a little while since we had steaks. Not sure if my teeth will allow, but I'm going to give it a try. So, hope you guys are all doing good. Draw some green beans out. I kept my bacon grease, so we're going to cook our green beans right on the Just to reheat them, or heat them up, I mean, they're cooked. So, I lost my... Oh, here it is. Yeah, now it's going to get windy on us. Hear the birds, guys? I have a bird feeder I hung right outside my park shelter. over half gone. So I forgot to bring out something hot to drink and uh looked in my picnic basket. You know it's just enough sugar for a glass cup or two of tea and two Lipton tea bags. Smells like fruit. So today we are not using my favorite seasonings. I got some blackened seasoning. I haven't had a blackened steak for a while. So we're just going to go with that and see what that's like. I don't know about you guys, but I like a lot of seasoning. So guys, I was going to tell you why and when I started prepping. Um, my parents were raised in the Depression. My, my dad's, I was born when they were almost 40. And um, my dad was in the Korean War. Um, well, he was stationed in Germany. He was a medic. And... Uh, So, my dad not so much, but my mom always tried to keep back up with everything in the house. I mean, she would keep the sugar bowl full, no matter what. If the canister went empty, she'd find some sugar, whether it would be in a Tupperware or in the cabinet. And she did that on purpose. She, um, she wanted to make sure she didn't run out of stuff. And, um, but I had never really thought about keeping more than, I don't know, I always probably had a good week's worth of food in our house, even when my kids were young, but I moved out to Washington, of course, and then I had to rough it for a while, and I finally got my own little place, little cabin, and the guy that I had went out there with was 
I didn't know it at the time. I didn't even know what a narcissist was at the time, but she was one of those. And um, we had been together about three years when we went out there. And he was all about getting his own self a job and he would stop and get burgers for himself and Starbucks coffee. Okay, guys, mind you, we're, we're pretty much homeless, but he'd go do the day labor thing and get paid if he'd go do that. And uh, so I ended up getting us this little shack to stay in for a, a bit. He didn't stay there long. Um, I sent him along his way. But uh, he left me a few times and came back. And our love was gone, if there ever was any. I don't think there ever was. Our infatuation was gone by that point. And uh, I only allowed him to come back for convenience and not because of anything, you know, inappropriate to say on here. But um, for rides to the store, to rides to go get my groceries. And, uh, but every time he left me, he made sure it was in between paychecks and he made sure there was no food in the house. And I realized later that that was no accident. Um, he wanted to make sure that I was left with nothing. And so then I got rid of him. And after we had been split up for a little bit, I decided to give JT a go. He had been always kind to me at work and wanted to date me, but just because of the fact that we worked together and he was, you know, he started out we were co-workers and then he moved up to be our boss, but um, just because of that reason I wouldn't even give him a chance. I said, I don't date co-workers, but I finally did and I, I don't regret it at all. But I was, we were sitting home one night in the shack and I watched a lot of YouTubers. I used to watch this one guy, probably shouldn't even say who he is because he got took off of YouTube because he's a little bit of a fear porner, but I was new to survival, YouTubers to survival channels and prepper things. But he said um, that there was a, a warning, I, I gotta be careful what I say here too, a warning to the people about to keep at least... Um, how long was it? Man, it was 2018 when I heard it. Um, I want to say they said a month's worth of food or something. But anyway, that's not the point. It said to keep food and water and um, pet food and stuff in your house for an emergency. And I was on the West Coast, so I was kind of expecting the Cascadia uh, earthquake. That's what I kind of started prepping for. But um, as soon as I told JT that, I'm like, I just want to start stockpiling and prepping, you know, not, like this was way before the virus and everything, like I said. Um, so he was like, okay, and we just started, we just started doing it. Um, but I also, I prep for other people. And as far as the prepping thing for people that, <clears throat> um, don't have room for it or what have you. If you think about it, most of you guys probably know somebody that where you could go. I mean, like, I stockpiled food and things for bartering. That's why I stored that stuff in the jars at our camp that I did. It's not that I ever thought I would need it in an apocalypse. Um, good barter. Good barter material. And, uh, so, I took in enough, I prep enough for several people because, you know, you got to pay the guards and stuff too, you know, it's just how it is, so, but if you can prep <clears throat> and you got an extra room or a garage or a basement, you know, my dad gives me so much crap for buying bottled water, I mean, you can't imagine, it just says it's throwing my money away and you know, but can I get him to save a milk jug for me? No, I can't. So, I do buy it. And, 
you know, now that we see what's going on in a lot of other places in the country, it just makes me more glad I did. I mean, sadly, I should have took my tower of water bottles to uh, my dad's because they're frozen solid in the garage. Still in the cases. I'll, I'll deal with that in the spring. But it's water, and it can be melted, so... That was my thoughts on that. If you have a place to prep, go ahead. Do it. What have you got to lose? Whenever, um... My first year on the orchard, where I got my shack, my landlord woke us up at four in the morning. He wanted people to go pick cherries. And there was dew on the grass and the ladders were metal, of course. So I went up the tree. First tree I went up. Picked a few cherries. And I came down the ladder the wrong way. And as soon as I hit the ground, I yelled to my friend. I'm like, get your mom, get the car. I broke it. And she laughed. And I was like, I'm not kidding. Get get your mom. Like, I can't even walk. So they came over and they put me in the car and took me to the emergency room. And the doctor did x-rays and he came back and asked me what happened. And I said, I missed the last couple of rungs on the, the ladder when I was coming back down it. And he said, just the last couple? And I kind of looked at him questioningly and he said, this is one of the most severe breaks or fractures I've ever seen and I was like really and I said I started to get tears in my eyes and I said well I can't wear a cast I have to go to work and he said no you're you're having surgery on this and he had made me go back the next day and I put um my right knee was shattered and they put a um titanium plate in there and seven screws and the screws go almost all the way through guys like someday maybe I can show you the x-ray uh, but pretty hardcore and um so that's another reason to prep I I had a paycheck and my ex would not take me to cash it like I was on crutches I was like I just need to go get food I need to go get cigarettes and he kept making excuses and finally a friend came over and took me to cash my check and got my supplies and stuff. And so that's, I, I was just like, okay, uh, from now on, I want to be able to survive without having to go to the fucking store. Sorry, I'm trying to quit cussing on here. And cigarettes too, I'm not smoking. Um, stick with me, guys. I'll get better. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, I mean... If you get in a car accident or you break a bone and you can't go to work and you only keep a few days to a week's worth of food in, in your your house, it's just a bad idea. If you don't have room to prep, that's one thing. But if you have room and you just don't, it's pretty scary. I did talk him into let me go back to work after a month instead of six weeks, so it worked out okay. But uh, it's pretty tough, guys. So when you hear me say, I can't run, I mean I really can't run. I'll never run again. So let's just hope my life doesn't ever depend on me having to run. Anyway, that's all I'm going to lecture about prepping. Most people that can't prep know people that, that would like them on their team and would gladly take them in. You know? stand guard for a day or whatever. Go get firewood. I'll feed somebody to go get our firewood for us. Go carry our water back to camp, you know. So, I love cooking outside, guys. It is such a joy. Fresh air, sunshine, the birds. So happy and well fed. All my animals are. 
Which not that these are mine. They're under my pine trees. So I suppose I should let you go. I don't want to run this into too long of a video. I try to give tips, but I, sometimes I feel like I should tell you guys more about myself. I, mean, I wasn't just born a hardcore lady. Nope. Life makes you that way. You can either let it make you angry tough or smart tough. I don't let it make me angry. Not that I don't get angry at myself or life, but um, I let it make me more determined. And my mother used to say something that I loved, and it was, um, I'm not a quitter, but I know when to accept defeat. So I always liked that. I knew if I tried my hardest and did my best, if I felt I had to walk away, that's just the way it is, it's not being a quitter. So I'm going to finish putting this meal together, guys, and be back to see you soon. Have a great night. Oh, I did remember, I wanted to tell you something. This saw is horrible. Blade works great, so I'm sticking with Old Faithful here, just in case you guys were going to, you know. This is so much better. Just throw it in the backpack. I'll bring this along too, but I won't be trying to saw wood with it. Maybe it's a bone saw. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I didn't read the packaging good enough, but either way, it's a great machete, so happy with my choice. All right, I'm out of here, guys.